In all honesty, I really couldn't give you a definition of what uh, what show jumping is, to be honest. It's eventing and doing figure eights, and am I saying this right? I'm not sure. I actually don't know what, uh, what it is. Showing is a pretty pony. It's fashions on the field, which everybody knows about in the racing industry, but in horse style. It is the best rider out there in a judge's opinion on one day. The best moving horse and the best looking horse out there on one day. Showing is virtually, if we can dumb it down, in layman's terms, fashions on the field. Wow and factor. The wow factor. Probably a bit like the uh, the trots, the paces. They might be they might be horses with four legs, but it's a completely different field. So it's something that I know nothing about. And going to a uh, an, an equestrian side of things, and if he if he was jumping the big logs and doing that sort of stuff, mate, he'll do that in a hand can. He'll he'll just be sitting back with a with a glass of Chardonnay and a cigarette in one hand and uh, blowing smoke rings going, is that all you want me to do? Because there's almost nothing that horse can't do. I thought he was spectacular um, in, in his turn of foot more than anything. I never really paid too much attention to him as a horse overall. I only really saw him on the TV. I think that probably the moment for me that really stands to mind is when he won in Hong Kong. Chautauqua, here he comes, the thunder down under. Chautauqua race to the lead, what a champion. And of course then from there, uh, his third TJ was just unbelievable. He came from a completely impossible position to win that race. And I think that's where I really, I know that was kind of his last win, but that to me was the day that I really was watching him and just went, how spectacular is this horse? Like you hear that he's a good horse, but just how good is he when he has that sort of turn of foot? Can he do it to Tarkwa? He's flying, yes! He, uh, well, the only thing he didn't do, the only thing he didn't do was come back from the dead, and that would have been the Steven Spielberg story if he had to come back and came back for a fourth DJ or something after it, all those all those issues of not jumping out the barriers. But that was honestly the only thing he didn't do. He was so smart and so clever and so light on his feet. I think the day that he captured my imagination was um, the day that he didn't come out of the barriers at Mooney Valley. Here we go. And he stood there, he didn't come out, he refuses to leave the barrier. He, he trotted around to the gates, and when I saw him trot around to the gates with that flowing tail and the way he collected himself, I looked at him not as a racehorse, I looked at him and I thought, boy, there's something underneath there that I think we can use in the showroom. But that day I saw him going around to the gates, I just looked at him and I just not so much fell in love with him, but I thought, you've got everything that we need. And yeah. uh, that's when we started uh, ringing Mr Lee and, uh, uh, and it sort of went on from there. Take a line out of my brother's book. He said, how would you be if the horse ended up going to the Olympic Games and winning a gold medal, something crazy like that. It'd be a, uh, you know what, it'd be a great story for racing, to be honest. Not, not just for the equestrian world, but for the horse racing. If Chautauqua can go ahead and do something, we're going to see a stack of, of footage of him not jumping out the barriers. And unfortunately for the things that, he, that he's probably going to be known as, but as I said, he'll be able to do anything he wants. It's actually been frustrating, in fact it's probably been, um, well Melbourne show last year was when it was first sort of mooted what we'd like to try and do, so it's been almost a 10 month journey so far, but we, we've got there and, and here's the proof now, but uh, uh, in fact uh, I don't know whether you've been a dad in your life, but I, I feel like an expected father at the moment because uh, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and now he's here, uh, we, can start, uh, we can start the journey and that's, uh, that's what it's all about. He's got a few little quirks about him apparently, but uh, We'll try and, uh, he's got to get to know us, and uh, we've got to get to know him. Um, he's had a big trip down this morning from, uh, from Sydney last night. He's just got to get to learn to, to know me, and, uh, uh, and I've got to get to learn to know him, and I'll do all the groundwork with him. And uh, Casey, water boy, water boy. And Casey will do uh, all the upstairs work with all the riding and what have you. Casey's uh, absolutely uh, wrapped, and I think the, the beauty of it, um, don't turn your bum on me, um, the beauty of, uh, I think, the story of this journey with uh, Chautauqua is that uh, Casey being a former jockey, uh, a professional jockey, and this fellow, uh, we don't need to tell you what his accolades have been, but I think uh, the former jockey now going back into the equestrian arena with this fellow here, um, it's an exciting time, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. Well, we both are, for that matter. 
Tracy's a really good rider, especially on Young. When he, he's a bit of a quirky horse, and she really suited him early on when he was learning. Um, underrated rider, rides really well, and yeah, it's very good. Prior to becoming a jockey, I was in the show ring, and as a junior rider, I had done very, very well with my horses and ponies, and had a lot of success. So to me, that was something that I always loved doing because I had tasted that success. Because in the racing industry, I was sort of, you know, middle field, mediocre. But in the equestrian world, when I was a junior, I was winning all the big things. Um, and I knew that I could do that well. But I just needed an opportunity and a horse to kind of go back and get back into it to where I left off. But hence the reason why I've been harassing this one. And, We've been harassing owners over the years to try and get me a horse off the track because I've always wanted to now come out and ride a thoroughbred off the track because that's what I am. Like I'm off the track just as much as the horse. So I really wanted to get an off the track thoroughbred and kind of showcase that in a sense. I just didn't realise that at mm. the end of the day, with all the disappointments we've had with horses that we haven't received over mm. the years, mm. that we wouldn't just get any horse, we'd probably get the biggest horse to walk off the track. So all that disappointment over the years has now became, as I mentioned before, our, our pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Good boy. Let's have a walk around the yard first so you know where you are. Hey, good boy. For the first week, I just let him settle. Um, and I think the main thing I wanted him to do was be a horse, because uh, I don't think he's had the chance for a long time to be a horse. And again, that's probably hard to explain to the average lay person. Be a horse. Yes, he is a horse, but what we term be a horse. So I have a box out the back there, which you've seen. He can walk in and out of his box whenever he likes. He's got a yard he can walk in and out of as well too. And across, he's, he's got his own paddock, which is next door again, which grass about that long. He's got a girlfriend on the other side and he's got a little mate on the other side. So all around him, he's now looking at things that he's never been able to look at before. So therefore it's a whole new environment. It's an environment that's, oh, you know, I'm being a horse. Oh, I could stay in here all day. I could stay in here all day. My wife would be down saying, come on, come and get your tea. But uh, it's a huge uh, uh, emphasis on trust between the two of us. Uh, once he learns to trust me and I learn to trust him, um, as I said, we've got a product. You know what that's a sign of? It'll nearly tell you. I'm feeling good, you know, it's just, oh, I'm happy, I'm good, I'm, you know. That's what we want. I'll just point out a couple of things. If I may draw on him just... You can draw yeah? as much as you want on So him. here's his shoulder blade scapula, we call it. If I take this like this, that's his shoulder blade there. On the tip of the shoulder blade, it's cartilage, so soft bone. Like the, like the bone you tip your nose and your ears. Yep. This is all bone. But what I'm getting at is, you see this faint line here? There's a line here, and then across to here. It's a big triangular muscle called the trapezius muscle. Our trapezius muscle we have also at the base of our neck here. Yeah. And if someone pinches you at the base oh, of your neck. Oh, I'm shocking. It's I'm quite numbing, sore. you know. Like, terrible. If I can get you just to hold your hand right between those lines there. Here? And, yeah, apply yep. some pressure. And apply pressure? Yep. We shall. And just, you can, as I lift his leg, you feel the difference? Yeah, I can. How the shoulder moves back? I can really and, feel the muscles and there. Keep it there, and then when the leg drops, it drops in. And it's soft and relaxed again. Yeah. Yeah. So to find out where you see the saddle on the horse in the correct position is A, between, behind the shoulder blade here. Yep. And the next one is finding the last rib because we don't want to go past the last rib on a horse. And a good rule of thumb is where the hair joins together like this, okay, every horse has it. And then you run a line up the middle like this. So we don't want a saddle going past that line here because here they're very sensitive past that last rib. What we're going to do with him now is we're just going to take him and give him the opportunity to have a really good feel of the Horribin saddlery, the stride free saddle that um, Peter and the crew have just fitted to him. So like all new pieces of gear, the leather can sometimes maybe stretch or might need a hole here or there. So I don't generally like to get on a horse straight away when they haven't had a little bit of a lunge first, bit of exercise. 
Welcome to, to the training of, of Chautauqua. This is what it's all about. It's going to be rather raw. He's not a push button at this particular stage in time, but um, I think you'll enjoy what you're going to see for, for the level where we're at right now. So let's go for a journey. Can Lee, let's go. Think of a diamond shaped circle, just a little bend, let go. Don't do that, don't do that. Now straight, Casey, follow the wall. Yep. Keep going. Good boy, huh? Head down, friend, friend. Give him some a stretch circle in trot. Let him stretch in the trot. Let him circle. Tease a little. When he resists, like that little bit of a tease with the inside rein, then give him the rein again when he's going lower. Good boy. Yep. Good, good. Good boy. The lower his pole goes, the more you offer him the rein, just let it, as a reward. We want good. that pole a bit lower. Boy, want the base of his neck bending. That's better. Let him take the rein. That's Good. it. Good. It's all your sharks. Good That's boy. That's the idea. That's the idea. Good. Give him a little pat for that. Static with how he went today. Even though it might look a little bit untidy in doing that, that's actually a really effective um, part of the horse's training. So um, you can always teach a horse to come up and into a frame, but to actually get them to go down and low is a really good thing for their muscles, their joints, and for their movement. So it's still a long way to go. Seven rides, you know, you can't have everything perfect. But where we're at today, Lee and I, I think we're both on the same page that the horse needs to do that. The next time you see him and we actually do bring him up and bring him into that frame that he'll go out with, you'll go, oh wow, it, it looks a million dollars. I'd like to see him successful as the horse, yep. not successful because he's Chautauqua. You know, the bottom line is I would just love the horse to be the horse, not win on his name. Even though he has a name behind him, let's be honest, if the horse doesn't go out there and he doesn't work and he's not good enough, the horse is not going to win. Mm. So that'll be a reflection that Sharky and I need more training. So um, best case scenario is, is to be out at Royal Show level winning, but it depends on his training and my riding and how we work together on the day. But uh, going forward, it's going to be exciting.